and welcome back to the advanced excel class excel can work with numbers as well as strings hence while excel has inbuilt functions specifically for numbers there are also functions that work with text or strings my name is tisha jakyani and today i'll take you through the functions that excel offers when it comes to manipulating text or strings and these functions are shown on the screen the first three functions on the list help to change the case of the text the other three functions on the right which are shown left right and mid is used to extract the character from the text the next two functions which is find and search is used to find the position of a particular character in the text and the length function is used to find the length of a string let's start with the first function which is the upper function as the name suggests it is used to convert a text into an upper case looking at my example sheet you can see that i have the first name and the last name listed and I am required to convert the first name into an upper case. Hence, here I'll use the upper function. To start with any function or a formula, I'll have to enter the equal to sign, enter the function name which I want to use, and then open the bracket. As soon as I open the bracket, you will see some recommendation or input that Excel is asking for in order for it to give you an output, which you can see here. And this is called as a syntax. So let's understand the term syntax in Excel before we start with these functions. Syntax plays a pivotal role in using a function. And as you have seen, as soon as you type any function in Excel, followed by the parentheses, a list of arguments will be seen. And these arguments collectively are known as syntax. Each argument are inputs that Excel formula needs in order mentioned to provide a desired output. However, in our example that you can see on the screen, there is only one argument, and that is text. So here we need to give text to this function so that this function can convert the text into an uppercase now the text is mentioned in the cell a2 so i will select the cell a2 and giving this cell name to the function is called as cell referencing i close the bracket and enter here you can see that the first name is converted into the uppercase now i can use the drag handle to drag it down by double clicking on the drag handle or i can also drag it with the mouse till the end Moving to the next function, which is the lower function. Again, the, as the name suggests, the lower function converts the text into the lower case. Starting with the function is equal to sign, entering the function name, open the bracket, and here I can use the last name to convert these text into the lower case. So I select the last name, close the bracket, and enter. Here you can see that the last name has been converted into the lower case. Using the drag handle again to drag it down to get the result for the rest of them. Now, how do I get the result for rest of them is mentioned in the cell referencing tutorial. Moving to the next one is the proper function. As the name suggests, the proper function is used for the proper noun, and this converts the text into the proper case where the first letter in each word is capital and the rest are all small. Let's say I want to convert the first name into a proper case. However, here there is only one text. So as of now, I'm going to use the proper case and see how does it result. Again, I'm giving the first name, and you can see that your first letter is converted into the capital, and the rest are all small. Let's say this particular cell had a full sentence. Raja is in Excel class. If this was the sentence, and if you look at the proper function, it has converted all the first character or all the first letters of each word into capital, and rest are all left as small. So this is how your proper function works. You can drag it down to get the result for rest of them. Moving to the next three functions that we have on the list, which is left, right, and mid function. The left function extracts the character from the left hand side of the text. So let's say if I want to extract three characters from the left of the first name, I can use the left function by entering the left function. Open the parentheses. You will see that the argument of the left function has is bigger or more than the upper and the lower function. There are two arguments that is given here, and these two arguments collectively is known as syntax. The first argument is the text, and the second argument is num underscore charis, which is number of characters. Now, because it is asking me to enter the text, I'm going to select the A2 as my text, and then it can ask me to enter a comma. You will see exactly after the text, it is asking for a comma. I put the comma, and your highlight moves from text to the number of characters. Now, because it's a left function, I need to tell Excel how many characters do I want from the left hand side of the text. So, the number of characters I can enter as three or whatever number that you prefer to give or you want. 
If I put three, it automatically picks up the three characters from the left hand side and gives me the result here. Now you would have noticed that in the function, your number of characters is shown in the square bracket, something like this. If I give a space to understand better, it looks like this. And between those two brackets is number of characters. This two bracket means that that particular argument is optional. And even if you don't give that argument, Excel will still give you a result. However, if you do not give a mandatory argument, Excel will throw an error. So we'll see how that works. So here, when I say that this is an optional argument, which is number of characters, if I decide to not give that, let's see what is the result that I get. If I don't give that, you will see that it is only giving the first character from the left hand side because in the optional range or the optional argument, the default value is one. Similar to the right function, the left function, the right function works. It works in a similar fashion where it picks up the data from the right hand side of the character. So you will see that it is asking for the text. So this time I'll use again first name, comma, number of characters I can give two, or I can leave blank if I want only one character from the right. And you can see it has picked up two characters from the right hand side of the first name. Again, you can use the right handle to drag it down till the end. Congratulations on completing the business dashboard using Excel course. Ready to elevate your career? Join our postgraduate certificate in data science and AI and gain exclusive benefits like a complimentary Python programming bootcamp, seven plus case studies, dedicated student support, and access to our job opportunities portal. Don't miss out on this chance to transform your career. Invest in yourself today and join our program. Click on the link in the description to enroll now and take the next step in your career journey. The next function that we have on the list is the mid function. The mid function is used to extract characters from the middle of the text. So when I say middle, I have to check what is the syntax of the mid function to understand this better. If you look at the syntax, the first thing that it is asking is the text, which we know that we want to pick up the first name or any other text that we want to pick up. Second is the start number. That is, where do I want to start picking up the data from the middle? So, if I want to say, I want to start from the third character from the first name, that is, in the third character, Ajay is in the Excel class, the third character is R, A, N, J. J is the third character in this first cell. So, I am saying that I want to start from the third character and I want four characters from the third character. That's how I'm saying in the middle. So then I give the text as the first argument. Second, then I have to start number where I'm saying third character. So it will start from J, comma. Then I have to give the number of characters after J. So I'm saying four characters. Now in this case, you can see the number of characters is not optional. So this is a mandatory requirement. So let's say if I'm giving four characters and close this, you can see four characters, including the space, has been picked up. Now that you can see the number of characters is not optional, if I leave this as blank and close the bracket, Excel will throw an error. All the mandatory requirement has to be given to Excel in order for Excel to give you the result. Now I'm giving the four number and here you can see the result has been picked up. I can drag it down to get the result for rest of it. So for each one of them, it will start from the third character and give four characters after the third character or from the fourth character. The next two functions on the list is the find and the search function. The find and the search function is used to search the position of a particular character in the text. Now, the difference between the find and the search function is that find is case sensitive while search is non-case sensitive. We will see when we are doing this function. Let's say in the find function when I am using, I want to identify what is the position of the character E in the first name. If I want to do that, I will use the find function is equal to find, open the bracket, and here in the find function, I will have to enter the particular text or the character which I want to find. Now, I want to find the, let's say, E. If I want to find E, I cannot enter E in this way. There is a reason why I cannot put E in this way because E is something that Excel doesn't understand. So then, what is that I want? So I need to know those few four things that Excel understands and if Excel doesn't understand something, how do I sh give that to Excel for it to give me a result? So let me go back and sh tell you some concept or make some concept clear. There are only four things in Excel that Excel understands. One is the number, 
second is the cell reference. When I say cell reference, that is A, A2, B2, H19. That's the name of the cell that I give to the formulas and functions. Third is the formulas or functions, which we already know of. And then the word true or the word false. So these are only four things that Excel will understand. Anything that you want to give to Excel, other than these four functions, has to go in the inverted comma. So open inverted comma, enter what you want to give to Excel, and then close the inverted comma. It has to go between the two. Now, when I say that these four things only Excel understands, it doesn't mean that I can not enter my name in a normal Excel sheet. I can definitely enter my name here. However, when you want to enter this name inside a function, say for example, if I'm using a, a find function and I want to use or I want to enter the name inside the find function, I cannot just type like this. I have to put it inside the inverted comma like this. Open inverted comma, enter the name, close inverted comma. This is all I have to give inside any function in Excel. Now that we know that your Excel will not understand anything other than those four things, which are numbers, cell reference, or uh, functions or formulas, and true or false. The true or false, when I say that's the word true or the word false. Okay. Other than those four things, has to go in your inverted commas. Your E is neither of the four. So I have to put it in the inverted comma. Now, like I mentioned in the start, find is case sensitive. So I will have to ensure that when I'm looking for E in the first name, E here I can see is capital. So I am looking for capital E in using the find function. If I'm doing that, once I enter, open the inverted commas, enter E inside that, close inverted commas, here I can say that I'm looking for E in the text first name, which is Raja is in the Excel graph. This is once I have given, I can skip the start number. Why? Because start number is optional. I close the bracket, enter. You can see that it is giving me the position of E where it is sitting in that particular text. Now, if I drag it down, only if E is capital will I get a result. So, you can see that all are giving me a value error because there is no E that is capital. All E's are small in this list. However, same goes with the search function. It's exactly the same when it comes to the search function. Your search function will be able to look for E even if it is shown in the small letters because search is not case sensitive. So I close the bracket, enter, and here you can see that I still get the result even if it is shown in the small letters. Now you know the difference between the find and a search function is only that find is case sensitive while search is non case sensitive. Now move back to the find function. One thing that we left out was the start number. The start number where I did I leave was because it is optional. And like I mentioned earlier, the default value in the optional is always one. The start number when I say, I need to tell Excel that I have to find E in the cell A2. And where do I want to start? So I'm saying that I want to start from the first letter. Now, why would I use or where will I use the start number option? Say, I have two words in the same cell. Like I have two A's or three A's in the same cell. Let's take Raymond Dekker. In Raymond Dekker, you can see two A's in the surname. Now, if I want to use find function to find A in Raymond Dekker, what will I be able to do is I will use find A, putting it in the inverted comma, comma, within B2. But this time, I do not want to find the first A. I want to find the second A. Then I'll have to tell Excel that start from after the first A. So I will, uh, what is after the first A? The third character. So I'll have to give the number of characters from where I want Excel to start in order to get me the number for the second A. So if I'm saying that, I'll start from R is 1, A is 2, and Y is 3. So I'll have to start from the third character, and I'll have to tell Excel, start from the third character, and then tell me where does the A is. You can see it is sitting on the tenth value. So this is how your find function is used to find the second character if you are ever looking for it. So this is your find and the search function. And like I said, the difference is only the case sensitive. Please remember that. But if you are using the find function to find a particular character that is at the rate, a space, a comma, a, a colon, these all does not matter with whether you are using the find function or the search because these characters does not have a uppercase or a lower. Moving to the last function of this list, 
is the length function. As is mentioned, length function is used to find the length of a string. That means if I want to identify how many characters are there in the first name, I can use the length function. Is equal to length, open the bracket. I can select, you can see the syntax saying only text. So I'll select the text, close the bracket. Here I can see how many characters are there in the first name. And here you can see the list where everywhere there is a number of characters given for each of these. So this is how you can use the text function, all the useful text functions to actually work on Excel to get your data identified or do some analysis. You can use all these functions. Hope you found this video useful. Keep watching for more such tutorials. Thank you.